As you all know, I use Oxral paint, but what you might not have seen me do is show you or tell you a little bit more about the spectrophotometer that I use. So in this video, I'm going to recalibrate the spectrophotometer and take a few readings. So every few days, you have to recalibrate your spectrophotometer. I've got the Valspar Oxral one. There's your actual camera inside there, it just stays protected. That's, that's a magnetic base, so it stays on there quite nicely. I've got a cover on it. As you can see, I get it quite dirty. You know, I'm quite a hands-on guy. Um, and if you read there, you'll probably say, yep, there you go, calibration required. So you all you do is you just follow, scroll down to where it says calibrate, click on the little menu um, dial. It says read black. So this is the black calibration. Take the cover off there. You've got three feet. And on the bottom of the feet are three sensors. So they all have to sit flush inside the unit and then it will actually do the reading. So just slide that on. There you go. And hit the menu button again. It'll take the reading. There you go. Now it's telling me to read the white one. So the same process. A little bit hard doing it by hand. Oh, hold on a minute. So I'll put it down. Right, let's put that down. One-handed is quite difficult. So there we go. So we're gonna take a white reading now. Same thing again, just locate it into the little ridge. And once it's in there, I'm gonna lift this one up, push the button. It's re saying reading white. Calibration complete. So that is how you recalibrate the octal spectrophotometer. In fact, pretty much any every meter is how you recalibrate them. And now we can go and take a reading. Okay, so always make sure you clean the panel that you're gonna be taking the reading from. You don't wanna be taking a reading off a dirty panel. This, uh, this cover that comes with the spectrophotometer has a little strap on it. I always put it on my hand because it's, it's an expensive piece of machinery. I just don't wanna drop it. So we've now got the choice of take a reading. So click there, you can click either that or the little dial on the top. It says take one of three readings. So all you have to do is put it on there and all three feet have to touch. Now, so that has worked, you can hear it's clicked. I need to move it a little bit, take a second reading. There we go, and take the third reading. So now that's given, I can now put in, if I want to, I can put in the customer's name, so I can always come back to this, um, or the sample color. If I don't need to do that, all I need to do is just press the enter, and now that's stored that paint code. So off we go back to the machine and dial it up. So here we go, we've taken the reading off the car, I've hooked it all in via the USB cable so it's connected to the computer. We're gonna search the formula, spectrophotometer, last reading. Now it gives us uh, the sort of shade it is. The effect is metallic. And what we wanna do is we wanna choose the brand. So the car was a Skoda. There we go, press return. So it's come to Skoda, click on next. It's now searching the library for the color and the formulation. So we're just gonna give it a few minutes to do this. And once it's doing it, and I'll come back to you. So it's gone to the formulation now. It's found two color matches. Well, it's actually the same one. They're both Skoda 9463. The bottom one here that's not highlighted is the standard shade, but it's saying go for the next shade, which is a slightly adjusted one. If I take the cursor and hover over the eye, the standard shade is coming out at a color score of 1.1. You really want this as close to zero as possible. Um, and the field shade, uh, well, next variant, which is number one, is coming out at 0 0.06. Now that that's, in my experience, that's quite a good reading score rate to work with. So if we click on that, which is already highlighted, go to the mix, it's gonna come up. So there we are, race blue, that's highlighted. Uh, race blue, we want the number one shade, which is actually saying it's slightly darker. Click on the max. Now this requires a, it hasn't gone straight to the color page, it's gone to uh, undercoat or ground shade of 908. So I'm gonna have to mix that formulation up. You have to put, when it suggests a ground shade, if I just come out of this, you'll see. So you can see up on the top here, it's flashing, it's in yellow, it says ground shade. 908. So it's saying that because this is this color requires a better 
Uh, rather than just using any sort of primer color, it requires its own certain shade of primer to get a much better lay. If you try and avoid using that, you'll find you'll end up using so much product that, and it'll take you so much longer, you would have wished you just did that. So whenever it says that, I just go straight in, mix up that value shade, you, you put on one or two coats, and then you just go straight into your color. And there's all the colors that I need for that particular race blue um, metallic variant one. So I need a 39, a 97, a 66, 14, a 909, an 88, 74, and 14 with some uh, water base. And I will change this to uh, kilograms because that's the mix I'm gonna do. And I'll probably only mix up about sort of 50 to 60 grams of that color. There you go. That's how the Octral Spectra Photometer works. Thank you very much.